would face left tonight. So I get a lot of people that come into my chair as what I call Botox virgins or injection virgins. And I absolutely love that because my favorite thing is to be able to take someone and to actually teach them how the muscles work on their face and how injectables can benefit them without changing the way they look. Um, really and truly, what we notice out in society is the bad work. Because there's so many of us that you look at someone and you say, wow, they look good. You don't know that they had anything done. And so that is my goal as an injector, is to always look at everyone's face individually, look how they're moving. So I'm always standing there staring at you and you're thinking, what's she looking at? <laughs> it's because I wanna see your own natural expressions and how I can really use my injections to fix the things that bother you and accentuate your beauty, okay? So um, when it comes to, hey guys, come on in. Join this club. Ooh, these are will help you. We're going to start our little talk here. So when it comes to Botox, so Holly is a Botox virgin. I've been working on her for a couple years now, trying to get her to, and she's now finally said, I'm going to do Botox. Um, but your reasoning why you didn't want to do Botox was why? Because I was just nervous. I didn't want to look frozen. My eyebrows all like stuck up. <laughs> right. So people don't want to look weird looking, right? So um, as a trainer um, for injections as well, um, Allergan is here supporting us tonight. Thank you so much. Um, I teach this to all of my injectors that are new as well. It's actually why people look weird when they do Botox. So when we're looking at Holly's face, um, areas that we commonly do Botox is gonna be the glabella region, which is between the eyes, and that's what I call our frowning face. So I'm gonna have you frown for me for a minute, dear. And I'm just gonna kind of move and draw. So she's got a little butterfly there, and that's what I call it. It's our butterfly. Um, we have several muscle groups that come together in this region. The middle is the procerus, and then we have two corrugators that are the wings, and then the bottom is the nasalis muscle. So the area of this is a depressor muscle, meaning naturally it pulls the brow down and in. So when we wanna do Botox and someone says, I wanna look more awake, this is the area that I treat, and why is that? Because by adding a little Botox to this area, we're gonna get a nice little lift and a nice little separation there, and it's gonna make her feel like her eyes are slightly more open and she's a little more awake. Um, normal treatment for here, 20 units to the glabella, sometimes 16 to 25, depending if it's a man or a woman, and how deep that muscle is, but frown, angry face for me. So then I can just really go to five little points right there and get her a nice lift and separation really inexpensively. Lasts on average three to four months and she's got a beautiful result. So the frontalis muscle, not FDA approved, but we've been doing it forever, is her raise her brow motion. So raise up high. So this is, the, this is that motion where you never want to put too much Botox up there because we all want to feel like we're a little lifted. And sometimes if you take someone who's never had Botox and you put too much in the front, uh, frontalis muscle or the forehead, then they feel heavy. And those people that walk around looking like this and they're like, I've had a bad example because my brows are now down here and I can't lift my eyes. That is not a good example of Botox. That is not a good treatment. So I always start very light very high, and I have them animate and mark exactly where they're pulling from. So raise up high for me, dear. With her, I would just be, pep I call it peppering. So we're just gonna pepper a little Botox up to the, her top forehead. Really like six, eight units, not a whole lot for the first treatment. I do complimentary touch-ups within the first two weeks. I like to see how you move. I wanna make sure that I get exactly your perfect treatment and she's still getting a lift. So where people get in trouble, the other area is we can treat is crow's feet, so big cheesy smiles. And you see people, even in their teenage years, are getting crow's feet around here. Why is that? Because we live in the desert and we're all squinting. And some of us wear cute sunglasses that don't really keep us from right? Um, so normal treatment for this area, we can treat as well. I can do brow lifts with this for our older patients that are looking a little heavy um, in their lateral brow by just adding two to four units right at the tip of the tail there and popping that up. Very simple and easy, if you know what you're doing. 
okay? So here's what I wanna just teach you guys. This muscle group here is layered and we have three muscles coming together. And so like, you guys really don't need to know all of this, but I think it's a fun little fact there is that when you feel like some, if anyone you've ever known has gotten a brow drop, it's because they're not placing it in the right muscle. So you have the deep muscle here at the tail of the corrugator, which is that thick meaty part. The top is the frontalis muscle, which is the sheath that lays over top of it. And down deep, you have the periosteal layer, which is a sheath-like layer on top of the bone. If someone was to go way deep on here, inject quite a bit of Botox, it could slide down that sheath into the levitator, which is right up above the pupil of the eye, and that could cause brow ptosis. So really it's all about knowing your muscles, knowing what depth to place it in. I always, and, and those of you all who I've injected before, you'll know I always cut my finger underneath. I pull up, I hold the meat of the muscle and I know my depth. And why is that? Because I want to ensure every single time that that never happens to you and you have a successful treatment. So talking about that brow lift is a portion of what we talk about as the triangle of beauty, which is when we're younger, we have these nice cheekbones, we have a chiseled jaw, we have a pointy chin, and we have uplifted eyes. Over time, what happens is our fat pads separate, and that turns into, let's see, jawing, right? We start getting some sagginess of our skin, and we look like we've been turned upside down. So what really aesthetically is if I take someone and we add a little injections to give them back that youthful triangle, it makes a huge difference in their overall look. And so what that would be for Holly, one day she's going to let me do it. <laughs> she's young and she's got these beautiful cheeks. But what happens is when you have a little bit of size to the cheeks, I know because I have a very round face is that we start losing definition into our cheek pads. So, what we do with Holly is we do a little lift. And how we do that is by going into the lateral cheek, lifting up and placing just a little bit of filler here high up onto that zygomatic bone. And it's gonna lift all the tissue from her, what we call nasal labial folds. I just posted about labia folds, not the same thing. Um, we also can get marionette lines as we age. Can everyone see this? So by placing a little filler up here, we get a nice little lift and contour. My favorite for this is um, called Jugram Voluma. Voluma is fantastic because it actually lifts tissue. So I can go straight down to the bone, add just little micro droplets onto that zygomatic bone, hold pressure, and it holds tissue. So it's really amazing. A lot of you guys have had it from me. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I would just be injecting Holly just right in here. If you guys can see, I'll come over to this side. I always draw lines for symmetry. I'm really big, um, it's, I call it my disease because we are not the same symmetry-wise on each side of our face. We would look a little alien-like if we were. But our goal is to try to achieve as close as possible. So, look at me, darling. Big cheese. And that's exactly where she would get that lift from. Okay? So we arch the brow with a little Botox. We chisel the cheeks with a little Voluma. And then we come and we address the jawline. So a lot of patients um, come to us and they're like me, they've had Invisalign or they've had braces or they've had teeth clenching over the years. So I want you to go clench down and turn. And Holly's a clencher, I can tell. So we're gonna look right here, clench and right there. So we're looking at her masseter muscle now. So um, the big craze right now is facial slimming, became popular in Korea. Now it's come over to us and we're all obsessed with our faces and our slimming jaws. So we can add a little um, Botox into the masseter muscle clench and it actually will slim this and actually help with TMJ too. So a little Botox on both sides. 
So we have a little Botox lift, a little Botox lift, a little Voluma lift, a little jaw slimming, and sometimes we need a little bit of filler in this area. So we can go in with a product depending on the depth. We could use a Juvederm product. We could use some of my favorites, which is new Juvederm Velour. Um, or we could use something even lighter and smoother in her lips, which is called Bobella. Um, all of which are very silky smooth injectables that we can place in and give her a natural lip without her looking like a duck, without her looking like a monkey or any other angle. <laughs> yes. So that is our triangle liquid face lift. So whoever wins that will be getting injections for your cheeks, lifting that up, and we'll be getting Botox for the lift of the brow, and we'll be getting whatever we need for nasal labial folds and lower face.